Hello everyone and welcome to a PWN Design Studio tutorial on Vue. In this tutorial we'll be talking about the ecosystem clumping option when you're, you know, you're loading in a plant or a different object and as well as the fast population option. And these are relatively easy options to play with. They are really self-explanatory. And if you already don't and if you already know about them then that's great. If not, well, then you're about to learn something. So I'm just going to load up a terrain here just because I need something to populate on that's not the entire world. And I'm just going to go in here and make this an ecosystem. And I'm going to load up a plant. The blue spruce seems fine. It's relatively low poly, so it should load pretty quickly. So normally, traditionally, what you would do is you would load up your tree, make your changes here. You know, whatever you can, you know, make this ridiculous color, and then you hit populate, and then V will populate your instance instances here, and you'll be able to see them here. Well, now you can hit the fast population mode, and what this will do is that every time you make a change on your plants, a view uh, will update it automatically, and it actually does it really quick. It it doesn't take a long time to to automatically populate. So I'll leave this on and then you can see right here it has this um, accurately reposition on surface button which it'll if you click that it almost does the same thing as this option right here where it'll just drop the object to the next flat surface or anything like that. This will actually accurately align them to the terrain because sometimes it doesn't always get it right. So you can use that if something's wrong you can try hitting that button and it might align it itself. But now let's go ahead and look at this auto update option that this fast population mode offers. If we go into density and click on clumping, you can see now it's trying to populate the ecosystem and it did automatically. It didn't have to push populate or anything. And what clumping does is it, it almost does the same thing that you can do with the variable density fractal right here when you load one up. Except this is a little bit easier to understand for people who don't want to look into the fractal for variable density. Uh, the clumping just clumps your trees together so you'll have these wide open areas with no trees and then there'll be these areas that have lots of trees so on and so forth. So I'll just show you. The amount is how much you want the trees to clump and the size is how big the clumping op the, how large the clumping groups can be. So this is 10 meters so maybe in this area like right here this is about 10 meters apart from the next clump so let's go ahead and r raise this up to be about 70 meters and then you can see view is updating and now you can see how different it is so instead of just a small uh, uh, open area in between each clump there's quite a large one so let's go ahead and raise this to 100 meters and now you can really see the vast expansion and if you raise the amount up to 100 you can see that there is some major clumping going on, very few outlying trees uh, that are existing. So you can have these big open areas like this, and you can put like a cottage right here. You don't have to worry about going in there and manually placing trees and making them to avoid certain objects. This is a really easy way to do it, and this is just, again, looks like it's just fractal-based, done inside of view as an actual option. You don't have to change anything. However, they let you use the variable density option here, which will pretty much do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and render without clumping and with clumping, and I'll show you what I mean. And it's super easy. I'm just going to do a preview render. And it shouldn't take very long at all to render out. It's not going to look the greatest because, you know, it's, it's a preview render, so... It's not going to look great, but you'll get the idea of the differences between non-clumping groups and clumping groups. And right here at about 80%, you can really see that they're just everywhere. Just tons of trees, and there's no rhyme or reason to where they're growing. They're just growing. And now I'll enable clumping, and I'll just keep these values uh, just because they're real, really extreme and now you see that they're growing in clumps. Uh, and this one's a little bit more apparent to, to see at, at first, so 
I don't have to have it go on for nearly as long. So what happens if I lower this? Let's keep the amount up, but then lower the size. You can see how they have these longer striations. They're kind of growing in these wavy ways. Um, but if I lower the size all the way, um, there's very little trees. Looks like they just kind of go away almost. There's a few of them, but not very many. You can see one right here and one right here and right there and there and some more up there. So size here looks like it's, you know, if you're going to have a large amount of clumping. You're going to have to have a, you know, a relatively large size here. So I'm going to lower this to 50 and lower this to 50. And we'll see about what halfway on both will do. So 50% is going to be way down here. You can see it goes from 50% is even halfway through this bar. So you can kind of see how crazy the changes here are. So about 50-50, it doesn't look, there is some clumping like right here and right here, um, but it's not as <coughs> prominent, of course. So what happens if we make the size all the way up, but keep the amount down? So like, you know, 30. Looks like it's just growing everywhere again. Get what? But there's about you know some there's some clumping right here and right here. Like there's a little bit. So it looks like some good values to stick with is about seventy percent, seventy to eighty percent on clumping or on the amount and the size to be relatively high if you want there to be any kind of differences um, or any variation. But though you could change the size. Um, but that's really going to make it so they're growing around everywhere again. So th these are just my recommendations after playing with it. Um, even 80%, you still have these little trees out here that are growing um, and causing a little bit of randomness out here. So they're not all just clumping together uniformly. Um, so maybe even raising this up a little bit more to you know, get rid of those trees out in the open. But still have very few. Looks good. So maybe between... 70 and 90 percent seems like a good value to stick with. You don't want them to be completely open without some trees out there. It just doesn't look natural. <clears throat> uh, but that's pretty much it. So that concludes this tutorial. It was very quick um, and it's very easy to understand even for new people. Uh, I recommend using clumping when you're using a um, ecosystem because you don't want trees and plants and rock and whatnot growing everywhere I mean they sometimes they don't grow in places that you know that they wouldn't view in real life so I recommend to playing with clumping and finding out what your scene needs uh, if you have any questions or concerns please let me know you can rate comment subscribe and share this tutorial if you want and you can see us at pwndesign.com thank you and have a nice day